I always remember this date, it's an infamous day for us. May 7th was a Monday, and that weekend before, we had heavy rains, Saturday and the Sunday. On the corner of 24th Street and 2nd Avenue, the street filled with water and overflowed into our underground vault. So these vaults are a cement hole in the ground that would be 40 feet long, 10 feet high, and 10 feet wide, and it completely filled up with water. This particular vault would have powered buildings like the base side, and then maybe about four or five other buildings in that area. And we found out later that the sump pump was trying to pump water out of the vault, but it ended up pumping into a collapsed catch basin, which means that the water was just circulating back into the vault. So we were dispatched there to drain the water, if you will. So we go there with a very big pump, and away we go. We were shooting it actually across the street to another drain that was working. Two hours later of pumping, we get about halfway done. One of the co-workers wanted to go down and see what was wrong, and we kind of voted against it, just didn't quite feel right. We get about halfway done draining this vault, and just out of nowhere, we get a large explosion. First phone call was to our SCADA system, and that was to dump all power that goes in or out of that vault. System control, Brad here. We'll shut her off right away. As soon as we receive that call, our due diligence is to turn that power off as soon as possible. Yeah, SCADA, we just lost vault 12. She blew up on us here. We got big fire here. Get away, Chris! Got the roof. You've been out here. You got it off? I'm working on it. So there was, I believe, about eight feeders to shut down that are in and around that vault. And to me, it felt like forever till the power was off. Two breakers open, just getting the last one here. Come on, come on, come on. And so we went through the steps and shut the system down, turning off half of the downtown core. All the traffic lights were out. So it was just total chaos trying to get downtown while everybody else was trying to get out of it. When we showed up, it was steam and smoke pouring out. You could hear the odd mini explosion still of, uh, of the capacitors and everything that let and go inside the hole. You could hear it all burning still. We didn't have time yet to phone fire, but they showed up. The person that called it in was over a block away. They thought it was an earthquake. That's how much force was through the ground. Police showed up. And then from there, we're coordinating street closures, sidewalk closures. I need a crew at North Central to open up the switch gear. I need another crew at Avenue C to open up the switch gear over there as well. I'm coordinating with the other crews over our handheld radio system to get crews where I need them at our different substations at manholes adjacent to both ends of the vault. Yeah, okay. Get me more guys over here. We're going to need more bodies. Normally, we find uh, in rush of, of people coming in with whatever information they have at the time. Is there an injuries? Is there a major catastrophe? We have no real idea of what's happened. Something could very well have happened. I mean, there's a lot of foot traffic over our vaults. So it was my job to suit up with the firefighters and to go down the hole with him. And he was to follow me all the way around to see what actually blew up and see if it was safe. I'm just an electrician. I'm not a firefighter. I'm not prepared. I'm not trained to go into an, an area like this. It's pitch black. There's no power in there. Everything's burnt. I had no idea what I was about to see. When I go down there, there's about three inches of sludge in the bottom of the floor. It's pitch black, there's no power in there. Everything's burnt. Everything's charred around me. I was in it for about six or seven minutes, making sure that it was, that the fire was isolated to the one incident where the one protector that blew up. Um, checking the cables over quickly, making sure that we didn't have a hot spot that still needed to be attended because of the, of the toxic gases that can be produced from the cables and the equipment. Every grate had burn marks on it. Concrete from the roof seemed to have cracked. 
you could see cables where the ribs of the concentric neutrals were showing light fixtures that melted down to the ground. The shell of the protector has holes in it, indicating that there was an extreme amount of pressure and heat that blew out really thick steel. The innards are just completely destroyed. What I'm guessing is the protector gasket failed, just maybe got crushed under so much pressure. Also maybe a result of it being too old, because this protector is probably a protector from the late 60s. Um, and water entered in, and water and contaminants just caused an arc. It can take an hour to two hours to find out exactly what happened. We sit here and worry, you know, is there somebody hurt? Is what's, what's happening? Uh, you know, there's a lot of different things go through your mind while you're waiting for what's, what's going to come next. Everything from this point was still intact, but all charred with, with smoke and, and debris. But the flash actually happened all right in amongst us here, right from the side of the protector onto the wall, where you can actually see in the wall that it's actually still has metal burnt into it. And it's actually spalled all the cement off from the explosion. This here is the grating that the fire first came out of. And I was over here on these slabs close to the entry point. Those were the ones that took the brunt to the force, and they are approximately 3,500 pounds each. The heat that came out of this thing was astronomical. It was moving cement slabs that weigh 3,500 pounds, and we usually use two 20-ton jacks to pick them up, to break them loose. That explosion was able to move them freely on its own. Some stuff I do remember is the, the eerie quiet on the, on the crew that was working that day when they, were, when they actually saw firsthand what could happen. There was a, it was a weird mood, there was quiet. There was a lot of humble people that day. It was one thing to take and have the explosion. It's another thing to explain to your crew that you're gonna go back in this hole that just blew up and re-terminate everything and turn it back on hopefully as fast as you can. Saskatoon Lightning Power. I just wondered if there's any update on the repairs to the downtown district. The crew is there working on it. We're just waiting to hear back from them. The roadways just called me and they wondered whether or not this was going to be continuing to rush our I'm only eight off until we know what's going on in Vault 12. It was an amazing day. Our crew stepped up to, to the challenge. Uh, any news yet? This is Mitchell Plaza calling. Well, once that's done, then they'll start putting the grounds in. There's a crew out there working on it right now. How long is it going to take us to disconnect those places and cap them? We're trying to get some information for Trevor so he can update the media. Peter 11A is capped. Uh, Peter 11A is capped. They just worked through any little bit of adversity they were coming across that day, so it was, everybody sure rose up. It was a good team effort. Just another 10 minutes here, Rod, and Kevin figures they'll be ready to pull those in. Some should be restored by 4.30. From what I can see, the King George is on. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I'm just going to run down one sec, make sure everything's still all lined up, and then we're going to go ahead and pull some. Sounds good. After the explosion happened, absolutely stuff changed. We've made more provisions on, on how to make stuff safer, how to more inform individuals of what their potentials are going down in these locations. It's changed everybody's perspective. So it, it did bring out some good. We started our network protector maintenance program and started replacing all of the gaskets and all of our old protectors.
our people here, not just in a small situation, work in a very high-risk environment. And we rely on each other so much. That person beside me needs to have the same safety philosophy as I have, that we both want to go home and we're going to look after each other as well as ourselves to make sure we have a safe working environment.